uh, I came across this absolutely fascinating press release from the uh, the Madison Madison Wisconsin Police Union. And Brian Austin is on the line. He is a detective with the Madison Wisconsin Police Department and uh, and a board member with the Madison Professional Police Officers Association, the MPM, MPPOA. Uh, MPPOA info.com is the website for the police officers. Um, basically, it's a union, right, uh, Mr. Austin? Yes, yeah, that's our, it's the police union that represents the rank and file of the city of Madison Police Department. Or I guess the, the proper way to address you would be Detective Austin, is that correct? Uh, yeah, Brian's fine, too. <laughs> okay, Brian works, too. Um, I, I read in this, in this uh, press release, if I may quote to you, uh, the right to free speech and the right to peaceably assemble are two of the fundamental rights upon which our democracy is based. We believe the recent enforcement action at the Capitol, that would be in Madison, Wisconsin, clearly violates these rights in a way that should be unacceptable in a free society. Those are strong words. Can you tell me what you're talking about? Sure. Um, well, we're, we're talking about a, a recent change in policy at the state capitol building in terms of uh, enforcement of what they're calling administrative code rules, um, but basically enforcement and citations being written for people coming to the capitol to protest in various ways. Um, just a little backstory for your time. As you recall, we had tens of thousands of people at our state capitol last year. Um, people from from all walks of life. Um, at the height, we had 150,000 people at the Capitol on a given day. Right, and these um, ranged and from lefties to Tea Partiers. Absolutely. We had all sides of the political spectrum. Um, and it was a really remarkable time in Wisconsin's history because we saw none of the strife or, or violence between you know the police and protesters that you've seen across the country. Mm-hmm. And the reality is everybody got to have their say. Yeah. And it, it, it worked. And the reason why it worked is because the, the leadership of the police agencies, and there were, there were many, many police agencies involved, um, given the, the number of protesters we had, but the leaders of those agencies made the decision that they were not going to place their officers in a position to, to violate people's rights, that they were going to provide a safe environment for, for people to have their voices heard, and, and that's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. It's a real proud moment in our state's history. Yeah. Uh, fast forward to about three weeks ago, and the, the Department of Administration um, in in our government has has basically started cracking down on people and has started writing citations for things like people coming to the Capitol and silently holding up a sign. Hmm. And there have there have been citations written for that the only offense that people have committed is silently holding a sign. Wow. Um, they're also beginning to cite people who are participating in what's called the Solidarity Sing Along. That's a, a group that is met every day at noon in the Capitol um, since the protest began and sings um, labor and, and free speech related songs. And, um, you know, they do so in a very peaceful way. When there, when there are other groups that need to use the, the Capitol Rotunda, the, the, my understanding is this sing-along group moves outside to be respectful of that. But now they're being cited for, uh, for not having a permit and for, uh, I guess it's called obstructing the Capitol. Mm-hmm. So we've been watching this with kind of growing alarm. Uh, my union and the Dane County Deputy Sheriff's Association over the past few weeks, and we we felt it was time to to make a statement about what we felt was going on. Well, it's a it's a very clear and and unambiguous statement, and and I think one that the founders of this country would be very proud of. Are are you having any success with this, or is anybody listening? Well, people are certainly listening. Um, our, our phones have been ringing off the hook, um, you know, the contacts and the press release. And so people are definitely paying attention. I think it started a, a very good dialogue. Um, mm-hmm. My understanding is, you know, I haven't heard of any policy changes as a result. The, the chief of the Capitol Police Department issued a response to, to our statement. Um, but, you know, what we want are, are people to become aware of what's happening. And you know the press release wasn't lip service. I, we truly feel these are these are these rights straight to the very core of our existence as Americans and yeah, what makes this, us Americans. This is the first what amendment separates us from from a lot of other nations in this world. You're absolutely that right. Don't enjoy these freedoms. Detective so. Austin is the is the head of the Capitol Police who cha- who changed their policy and started arresting people for for exercising their free speech rights. Was this a decision made unilaterally by the head of the Capitol Police and the associated agencies, or w- w- are they answering to somebody else? Was there a is there a political component to this, or is there some oh. other uh, a, a bureaucratic or administrative component to this? What's happening? 
Well, I mean, let me just say that, you know, I, I certainly don't have access to the inner workings of, of the state government at this point, and, and so don't can only speculate as to motivations. But I do know that the, the, the Capitol Police Chief is, is answers to the Department of Administration, which is a department out of the executive branch of our, our government. So, Which answers to um, Scott Walker. Yes. So, so I, I think, and, you know, there's a, a, a new chief was brought in. And again, I... I I don't know the man personally, so I'm not commenting on motivations or anything like sure. that. All I can do is comment on observations that we're seeing in changes of behavior. Hmm. And and so I think, you know, certainly um, what I'm hearing is that marching orders are coming from the DOA. Hmm. Uh, and the, the irony of all this is that, you know, the protests were really kind of quieting down, becoming smaller and smaller as time passed. I mean, it's right. kind of a natural progression of things. And this is really... I think started to incite, you know, more people coming again. And, and so I'm not really sure if that, you know, the, the stated claim was we're just trying to restore order in the Capitol. It was a pretty orderly place. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not really sure of the motivation. Yeah. And you it know, might even backfire. Uh, but uh, the other component to our release is an acknowledgement of the terrible position this puts the, the rank and file officers of the Capitol Police Department in. Sure. And these officers for a year and a half have have dealt very admirably with protests and have really done a phenomenal job. And I think they're they're being put in a position now. Coincidentally they were they were one of the few police agencies uh, or groups of police officers in Wisconsin that were not exempt from Act Ten, which means they have lost their collective bargaining rights. Mm-hmm. So these officers are extremely vulnerable to the whim of their leadership in the Department of Administration and have little recourse to to fight back against that. And so I think they're being put in a really not only a, a bad position, but a potentially dangerous situation where they're having to provoke confrontations with people that are not necessary. Wow. Uh, Detective, Police Detective Brian Austin, MPPOAinfo.com, the Madison Professional Police Officers Association. Uh, Detective Austin, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me on, Todd. Appreciate it. Much appreciated. Well,